This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Local Color. Well, today we've got John and John from Theater Memphis coming in. The Johns. The Johns. We've got the two Johns <laughs> Manus from Theater. Manison Moore. Manison Moore. And uh, we also have the amazing Kevin Dean coming in from uh, Literacy Mid-South to talk about, is it the entire month, Read Across America? Yes, Read Across America. And this is a national campaign, but they've co-opted this book for our own celebration. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What yes. else? Well, we've got, um, also I want everybody to be sure to know about the Books Burks, the great bookstore in Cooper Young. They have a campaign, a Tumblr campaign going right now, whatever. You can find the link on our website. Our re website. But they're just encouraging Memph Memphians to submit their 10 books that would make their ideal shelf. Oh, that's I've pretty sweet. I've done it. Chris has done it. You guys I'm need gonna to get do it. I need to do it. Yes. I need to do it. Well, and I think I think it's a con. I mean, at some point it becomes a contest, right? Someone will have somebody's their gonna shelf vote on painted. who's the best, or I'm not sure exactly what the. This is good research for somebody else because I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys know Christiana uh, Lebovich? Yes. Yes, indeed. She is precious. She's coming. She is from the Memphis Knit Mafia, and we're going to talk about Knit the Brooks. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, it's going to be a cool event. So, okay, we've got some album releases coming up. Yes, a couple Tis of them the season. excited about. Uh, yes, definitely. Spring is a crazy time yeah. for album releases, and even locally. Um, we've got the Dead Soldiers are releasing a record, and they're going to do a show on March 2nd at the Young Avenue Deli. Um, if you're not familiar with them, I'm it not. sort of um, lends itself into, yeah, I think you would probably put it in the indie rock, under the indie rock umbrella, but there's some banjo in there. There's some... Really cool stuff happening. A little bit of bluegrass, a little bit of folk, a little bit of rock. Um, I like that. It's a lot of fun. They put on a great live show. That, so, sounds, that sounds refreshing. Yes, go to the deli and see them on March 2nd and get their new record when it comes out. Um, and, and then, they are from here? Yes, they are, yeah. And in fact, made up, a band made up of guys who've really been, several of them have been around the scene for a really long time. So, And this is kind of a new thing that they're doing. So it's definitely go and see them, really talented musicians. Um, and then in addition to that, one I'm really excited about too, Mark Edgar Stewart, who, if you've paid any attention to Memphis music, kind of, you know, for the last 10, 20 years. He's um, been everywhere. He's been everywhere. He's played with John Paul Keith in the 145s. In fact, he was in the original 145s. Um, he's played with Corey Brannan. He's played with... Uh, the band the, that he probably launched with the, was the Paul Tuckets. The Paul Tuckets, right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And Mark McKinney. And right. Andy Digg. Right. Not Andy Diggs, uh, uh, Grooms, Andy Grooms. Right, uh, Kevin Cubbins. Kevin Cubbins. Exactly. So Mark is just now kind of coming into his own as a songwriter. Mark, you might know Mark for playing bass. He plays just about everything, but upright bass and electric bass. But now he's writing his own songs after the death of his father. Um, he started writing and playing acoustic guitar, and they're amazing. He's doing um, a guest spot at a residency on Thursday nights at the Poplar Lounge, if you want to go and check him out. But his, the new and improved, the new and improved Poplar, Poplar Lounge. Lounge. Exactly. Um, but his release show for his record, which is called Blues for Lou, um, is on March 9th at Ernstine and Hazel's. And it should be a lot of fun. Um, if I know Mark and, and how much he is loved, there are going to be a lot of cool Lots people, of people. Um, popping out of the woodwork and, and hanging out. So that's going to be something really not to miss. But truly, I've listened to the record. I had a sneak peek and it's incredible um really sort of you know sad and emotive because it's definitely all very in that moment of him losing his father um but an incredible musical experience he's just a really talented songwriter it's fun it's fun to watch him play guitar mm -hmm. um because you know when i think of mark i think of him as being a bass player right. and and he can play anything he can but he was he loves that Roger Miller finger picking it's style. No, I was exactly going to say. He's, it's like loves he's playing a banjo. Roger yeah, it's I fantastic. Love that. And and he's gotten just great. I mean, uh, I played a show with him recently and stood very close just because I liked watching his yes. fingers work the. He's yeah. a lot of fun, and he has a really interesting voice too. Um, just the timbre of his voice is really like it draws you in. So 
couldn't say enough good things. And that's the 9th? March 9th. Yeah, the record is out March 5th, so you'll probably be able to get it online. If I could guess, I would uh, go to Mad Jack Records' website. That's his label. Um, but then the release show is the 9th at Ernestine And we'll Ernestine be able to Hazel's. get it for sure at Ernestine and Hazel's yes, that night. Yes, yeah. And let's just go ahead and talk about this. Ernestine and Hazel's has added to their menu the they Soul doubled Burger. their menu. <laughs> yes. They have doubled their menu. Oh, so now you get a you can get Soul Burger with cheese. A Soul Burger <laughs> has cheese and gumbo. 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 I don't know yet if it's Soul Gumbo. It's got to be. I yeah. think they may have chili, too. No. I, I think I saw on the sandwich board as I rode by there, try our gumbo and chili. So they may have tripled their chili. menu. Oh, That's my incredible. goodness. It's the Ernestine and Hazel's has blown up. <laughs> Yeah, food, we, foodie paradise. <laughs> when we come back, Ashley will be talking with Kevin Dean about which book everyone should be reading the next month. that you could be with us today because we're talking about something very exciting. This is a reading campaign, essentially a community-wide book club that Literacy Mid-South is encouraging. Um, first, I want you to tell me about this book you picked. Sure. Uh, well, it's Wonder by R.J. Palacio, and we discovered it um, one day at Booksellers at Laurelwood. Somebody, somebody that worked there said, you have to read this. I was at the bottom of my stack, wasn't really <laughs> interested because it's, it's in the young adult section. And uh, finally, I, I, I broke down and I read it, and I, I couldn't put it down. I read it literally in one night and uh, found the book that we wanted to, you know, to promote during this time. And um, I've had my mom read it. My mom's read it to my nephew. My, you know, she made all of the people in her office read it. So it's one of those books that you really talk, can talk about, and you mm -hmm. can talk about it with your kids, and your kids can read it, and you can read it, and everybody can love it and talk about it. And, and it's a great way for us to promote reading um, in the Mid-South. And, and get these conversations started about a, a, a book that, that everybody's talking about. Well, and this is part of a greater campaign. So first, it's March is Read Across mm -hmm. America Month, and Literacy Men South is participating by encouraging all Memphians to read this book. And or there's read several, something. Or, or read anything, <laughs> or read that anything. Matter. <laughs> But specifically, as part of our community-wide book club, this book, because there are several events mm -hmm. built around this. And you've got one coming up tomorrow at the Booksellers at Laurelwood. Yep. What's um, that? March 1st from 3 to 5, uh, we have a... We have a big kickoff event. You can bring your kids. We're going to be making masks like um, like Augie does in, in the book. Um, and you're, you, there's going to be a photo booth with, with scenes from the book uh, that you can get your photo taken. Cool. And you can sign the Kindness Pledge, which is a, or Choose Kind Pledge. It's a, it's a pledge that um, kids and adults are signing all over the, the United States to, uh, to say that they're going to be kind. Because that's what this book is all about. It's about kindness. Right. There are themes about bullying mm -hmm. and just being like you say, just kind to others, yeah. which I think is a universal theme that regardless of what age group you're in, even though this is a young adult book, everybody can appreciate Absolutely. that. And then you've got a, um, a wrap-up event we do. in April. Really excited about that. It's at Rhodes College, and mm -hmm. we, um, we don't have, it's April 2nd. We, we're still working out the details, but we do have, the author is most likely going to be Skyping in and, and talking to us. Um, and then we have a, a young lady named Jasmine Gray. She's from Memphis, but she um, has a facial abnormality abnormality like the uh, main character does mm -hmm. and she's also a documentary filmmaker so she's bringing her documentary to show uh, some snippets of it that's it's coming out soon and then we're also doing a screening of another documentary called bully which is powerful very powerful that's a, a I mean it's I hate to use the word great but it's, it's kind of heartbreaking and it'll break your heart yeah they would yeah um, all right so Part of the way people can participate with this mm -hmm. is through social media, Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter. Um, and if anybody has a Twitter account, they can follow Literacy Mid South. And what's that handle? Uh, the handle is at Literacy M South. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can join the conversation with the hashtag Read Memphis mm -hmm. or Wonder Memphis. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And if you if you tell us what you're reading or you talk about the Wonder book to us, um, you might win an Amazon Kindle Fire because we're giving away an Amazon Kindle Fire and a $200 gift certificate to booksellers at Laurel Wood. So there's some incentive in telling us how you how you felt about the book. That's right. Oh, and speaking of booksellers at Laurelwood, if you do the event tomorrow mm -hmm. and you decide to buy your book then, there's a discount. There is, 20% off, yes. Fantastic. And they also have a gives back program where you can sign up to 1% um, of your, of all the sales will go back to Literacy in itself. So that's a, a great, great incentive for us. Right. But they've been good partners. They're great partners. Well, thank you so much for coming in to talk thanks. to us today. I'm excited to reread this. Me too. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Chris is up next with the stars of A Steady Rain at Theater Memphis.
your show should be sold out every night. With well, thank you. With <laughs> a waiting list. I that's an incredible compliment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things that I think needs to find an audience that's not accustomed to coming to the theater. Well, you know, we were talking about that. It's 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 really a. Uh, how, how do you put this? It's, it's a man's play, you know? I mean, yeah. It's a story about these two men with this uh, friendship, this brotherhood, yeah. and how they have to, you know, deal with each other and life and their job and, and all of that. And, and uh, at the same time, I, I honestly think that anybody can relate to this yeah, because yeah, it's, sure. a, a, yes, it's a cop drama, but I don't view it that way myself. I view it a, a drama between two friends mm -hmm. who've known each other all their lives and uh, their lives, um, everybody grows. Right. And sometimes they grow a little bit different directions, sometimes <laughs> they grow back together, and they've been together so long, it's uh, a partnership, not just as police officers, but more. <clears throat> it's weirdly both very current and very retro in a lot of ways, yeah. because the, the story about the kind of cops that you guys are are the kind of things we're reading in headlines mm -hmm. a lot in Memphis lately. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's a throwback to, you know, the two guys who grew up in the neighborhood yeah. on wrong yeah. sides of the law, yeah. although you're both cops. Right. Well, I'm sure they've done their fair share of questionable activities when they were younger, but... Yeah. Or, 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 or on the job, or on the job for that matter, yes. <laughs> when you see the show, you, you know, yeah. you know the, yeah. that, that, that gets discussed. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but when you were, you know, it really, I mean, it's, it's The Wire. If you're a fan oh, of The yeah. Wire, you would love Definitely. to see this show. Absolutely. So tell me, you also are both actors who are great at picking parts, it seems. <laughs> I think we're just lucky. I think, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think in this case, it was uh, a lot of luck. I mean, I read the script, and I thought this was a fantastic script. Mm -hmm. And actually, either part, they're both fantastic parts. And it's such an equal, uh, it's, it's a, a well-balanced script in that, that you know, way. It's, it's funny, because uh, you know, Jerry was saying how he went back and forth between who Jerry Chipman, played, the director. Jerry Chipman, the director, uh, was saying how he went back and forth when casting, trying to decide which was going to play which, right? And uh, you know, maybe if we had about four more weeks, we could have just gone back every other <laughs> night. <laughs> I, the, the play requires so little technically. I almost, you know, it's it's tempting to just say go mm -hmm. because because it really is the the two of you only play yourselves, mm -hmm. but over the course of an hour and a half without an intermission, we're introduced to this really just vast gallery of personalities that exist at this, you know sort of fringy place uh, yes. between law and not law. Well, and I think, you know, th th sort of the beauty of the play is that because of the unusual format of this, this sort of storytelling kind of thing, uh, they're telling real stories. And these people that you get to know and get to meet as an audience member have to be real, mm -hmm. very real to us in order for it to be real to you. you know? I, I'm amazed by the fact that uh, it's loosely based on a true story. Mm -hmm the story of a couple of police officers who accidentally hand over uh, um, someone to Jeffrey Dahmer, the mm -hmm. serial killer and murderer, right. and he becomes one of Dahmer's victims. In most people's lives, this would be a defining incident. And I believe it was it, it for is. a lot of those officers and mm -hmm. the people who worked right. on the case. Uh, <clears throat> In this, it all, everything seems to be going so wrong in so many ways, it's mm -hmm. like just one more thing. Right, and you you actually have a monologue right that that, <clears throat> that ends with uh, this went wrong and this went wrong and this went wrong and it's like when is it going to stop? Uh, and then you're introduced to that aspect. Right, and um, on top of it all, we're on top responsible of all, for this kid yes. being eaten. It, it, yeah, and they were already the thing happens, they were right? already pretty much having a lot of tr trouble anyway. And going downhill, maybe not in their eyes, but you know, from an audience's point of view, you might see that they're sliding down a slippery slope, mm -hmm. which is something else he says. A theme and then they discover. What have we done? So because this thing requires so little and, you know, basically just you and you and you've already learned the lines, what are the chances that you guys keep this in your gig bag? I mean, you could bust this out at parties. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a very depressing party. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, some part, it's, it's, it's well some we've part. thought about doing, well, we haven't seriously thought about doing, but uh, I guess a midnight show where we're all just happy and everything we say is just very happy. <laughs> Because that would we'll be, do clown that'd be quite or something interesting. Really bizarre like that. And you know, when we talk about it being a drama, it's not a, every moment is not a down moment. No, the there's there's, there's you know, humor in it. There's I mean, humor. There's, there's reality. There, there's friendship. There's I got to cut you short. Thank you, John oh. and John. <laughs> Coming up, Mamie meets with a member of the Memphis Knit Mafia.
Christiana, I'm so glad you're here with me today. <laughs> Obviously, um, we are knitting and crocheting. And tell everybody about why we're doing this. We are getting ready for Knit the Brooks, which I'm really excited I about. Am too. <laughs> <laughs> and Knit the Brooks is we're actually taking. Um, you've assigned everyone a square, a size of a square. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is just a little representation. You're putting them all together mm -hmm. and actually covering um, the outdoor the scul sculptures of the everything Brooks. Everything at the Brooks. And this is going to stay up for a month, mm -hmm. right? And um, you're doing the installation on what, March the 17th? 17th. And it's from, so you'll actually be taking all the pieces and putting them together. Mm -hmm. um, what time? We'll be doing the installation starting at 11. And it's going to be really fun because the people who knit are going to be there. People who didn't can just come see how the installation works and how knit graffiti works. And I want to say thank you for not discriminating, even though I don't knit, I crochet. <laughs> we, um, it takes all kinds. <laughs> I know. And thank you for not making me feel like the outsider here. I would love for you to teach me how to knit someday, though. I, it's, it, you know, it's just a different skill set, but it's a... Uh, it's kind of the same. Okay, now tell me about the uh, Memphis Yarn Mafia. Memphis Knit Mafia. Memphis, excuse me, <laughs> Knit Mafia. I started knitting, um, I guess right before I got married, because we received a wedding gift that was a crocheted blanket, and I thought that was the most amazing gift. And so I taught myself how to knit, and then I thought, you know, I could hang out with other people who do this. Yeah. Um, and then it was really hard to find other people who did this. Yes. Who were sort of younger yes. and doing fun things. and um, Who don't just take it really seriously. And well, and it's considered a grandmother craft yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And I put a, um, I started a board on Ravelry, which is like a knitting crochet message board, and met the most amazing group of women. And, and now y'all regularly meet, right? The core group meets every Tuesday. And where do you meet? All over Memphis. Okay, um, so if anyone wants to join, are you, is there like, is there like a mob initiation? <laughs> well, we're actually um, mostly a closed group now. Okay. We kind of, we hit a point where it was so big that we didn't get to talk to each other or yeah. see each other. Yeah. So what we do is we have a regular group that meets um, weekly, and then we have open knit nights, and you can find out about those on our Facebook page, Memphis Knit Mafia. And we're going to have that on our website Great. at wkno.org slash local color. <laughs> And, um, you know, we're going to have the information about the Knit the Brooks event, too. Perfect. So now listen, tell me, because you guys have done some other, um, what do you call this, a knit mob? I mean, you've done some other <laughs> a guerrilla knit projects, We right? have. Some people call them knit graffiti, knit bombings. Um, for a long time, whenever we went to a restaurant that we loved um, or a meeting place that we went to, we... Um, now put I, up a piece. I saw one outside Cafe Eclectic, and it was wonderful. It was like on the... That was the, our first. It was like, was it really? Yeah. Oh, snap. It was on the pole, and, mm -hmm. and it was really cute. Everybody at Cafe Eclectic, that's actually where uh, we started meeting. We met there for almost two years straight, and um, Kathy and everybody there are just phenomenal and they so really supportive. Are. They really are. They're um, cool folks. And you was really encouraging of us doing that, and then uh, we've also done pieces at High Point Coffee, at... Um, Republic, at Pearls. Uh, we have some on the Green Line. Aww. So just anytime we're, we, you know, we get excited about something, we like to sort of tag it and let people know that, you know, we were there. And I mean, so obviously, you know, anything goes. It's any variety, any style, any pattern. And it looks so cool. Are you going to be able to take some really high-res photos? So maybe we can put them up on our Facebook we page. Are. And We're going to have some photographers there getting sort of documenting the entire thing. And the fun thing about it is that everybody has their own style. Everybody has their likes and dislikes. But when it all comes together, it becomes, you know, a real piece of art. Yeah. It becomes a real piece of... Um, it's, a, it's a sculpture. It's absolutely a sculpture. And I consider this to be an art installation. I love that. Yeah. And the Brooks is such a gorgeous backdrop. Are you going to do the lions? We are. I actually have a special <laughs> surprise for the lions. <laughs> um, we'll be doing um, some of the outdoor sculptures, some of the lighting, benches, railings. And then, yeah, I have a special surprise for the lions. I can't wait to see it. I'm pretty excited about it. I can't it. wait to see it. <laughs> so what's up next? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. The Brooks has been so supportive and so encouraging for us to do this. And We've had knitters. I've got people who've mailed me pieces from England, who've mailed pieces from St. Louis and Nashville, who just Memphis is special to them and they wanted to be a part of it. So 
knowing that there's a big community out there that wants to be a part of this, I think um, you know what I think we, we need could to do, do something else. You know what we need to do? We need to but, find out on Guinness, uh, on the uh, Guinness World Book of Records like what, what the, the large largest <laughs> niche installation is and go for it. We should. Let's do that. We should totally do that. Are you going to come back and see me? I'm completely oh, going to come back. Are you going to teach me how to knit? I'm I'll gonna teach, teach you how to, how to knit. crochet. Okay. It's super simple. We can do it. Okay. We'll it's cover so, the whole city. It's so nice to meet it's you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Christiana. We'll be right back for a wrap up and a talk about some upcoming shows we don't want to miss. I'm really excited about the uh, Literacy Mid-South. And tell me about the book again. Um, it's by R.J. Palacio. It's called Wonder, and I really encourage everybody to read it. It's a YA title, but this is appropriate for everybody. And it's about bullying. Yeah, the, the main character, Augie, um, has facial deformities. They never really completely address specifically like what that looks like, but it's clear he's having a tough time. And I, I just cried and cried and cried, and I'm actually looking forward to Sadly enough, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to rereading it. Well, um, I got my copy and I'm going to read it, yeah. you know, and I'm going to share it with Hannah mm -hmm. as well. And then tell me about um, the play that John and John. A Steady Rain, hard boiled cop drama about two police officers in, in Chicago who find themselves in um, a, a life changing circumstance. Oh my gosh. And then at the Brooks. Does this not sound like fun? I'm just thoroughly impressed you were able to knit through that whole. Oh, she's oh, girl. She's crocheting. Oh, girl. I'm, crocheting. I'm a hooker. I crochet. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's too. impressive. It was funny. I told uh, Christiana, I was like, D I don't knit. I crochet. She goes, it's okay. We don't discriminate against hookers. <laughs> <laughs> But That's isn't that cute. fun? I love that. I, I can't wait to see what they've got for the lions. Elizabeth, now that I've got you here, you know, I don't get to go out and hear my live music like I would love to. So what's new? What's coming up? So much happening. Um, a couple of things coming up at the Poplar Lounge. Um, the Smoking Flowers with Deering and Down on March 2nd and the Warble on March 3rd. So that's a Saturday and a Sunday, two shows right in a row. Gotta say, lots Some of great cool. acts. Yes, okay, definitely. now I know about Deering and Down. Tell me about the Smoking Flowers. Sort of country rock kind of a thing happening. It's actually a husband and wife. Um, so and aren't Deering and Down? They're not husband and wife. It's a man and a woman. Oh, but, okay. it, but it yeah, is a, a man and a woman. <laughs> it's, a it's a man and a woman and a man and a woman. Okay. Yes, yeah, those are your similarities. Okay. But that should be should be a good show. Lots of talent there. But really, just wanted to point out that if you haven't paid attention to the Popper Lounge lineup recently, you really should. It's changed. It's changed a lot. a lot. They've got a new team in their booking, and you're just seeing great stuff happening almost every night of the week. It's really nice to see, you know, good. Like I was talking about earlier, Mark Stewart. Um, stepping in on a residency that Kate Lawson does on Thursday nights. She's it's, she's having I love Steve her. Selvage come and sit with her, Al Gamble, just to hang out on a Thursday at the Poplar Lounge it's for five It's been a regular bucks. music venue for a long time, but sure. there, yeah. it, there's something but there just, almost every night now. Yeah, and that's what I love is that you're really seeing a lot of people come and regular stuff happening, and that's what I love. I love going, okay, every Thursday night I can go and hear something really great for five bucks. Mm -hmm. Now, is Kate the warble? No, no. Kate Lawson is a whole other different thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and the Warble will be playing with Chateau Nowhere on the 3rd. Um, but really, stay tuned for, for lots more from the Poplar Lounge. And there's also great stuff coming up at the New Daisy. Yeah. Um, and do not want to miss that. Between the Buried and Me is on March 4th with So She Sang, but the whole March lineup at the New Daisy. Oh, we'll be there the 19th. Is Who is that? Packed. Um, Circus of Survive, Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men. Yeah. Okay, lots uh, of lots and lots and lots yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I've got the carload of tweens heading <laughs> heading down to the Daisy for of Mice and Men. And it's, it's, it's super stacked in they March. They are just so excited. They're buying outfits and hair and... You know, buying it's hair. buying hair. You know, the hair's <laughs> got to be dyed and cut, and you know they've got to have their glasses, and it's just a big deal. It's a big production. It's a big production. Absolutely. Well, if that's your scene, that's where you need to be. And you know, the Daisy's such a great room to see a, oh, yeah. a band. Anyway, I couldn't imagine being 14 years old and going in and being able to I, experience that. But I think still. I was around their age when I saw what I consider to be one of my first, you know, real concerts Aww. at the Daisy. So I totally have that memory. I yeah. saw Prince and Rufus Thomas improv a song together at the Daisy. I, I, it's, you know. That's a that's great day in the yeah. time at the Daisy. And it was. Just not to, not to name drop. Amazing. <laughs> Those are you good know, shows. Yeah, it's a great yeah. He has just, over the years, just 
consistently book that room smart mm -hmm. and across the board, you know, so. Have from, you said anything about the warble yet? Has he, has he yeah, I, I want to know warble. about what is the warble though? What what do they warble? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do warble. Do you, do you know Alex Harrison, the visual artist, Alex Harrison? No. Really fantastic uh, uh, painter, designer animator. You know the murals on the side of the high tone? Yes. The anthropomorphic murals, yes. rock and roll murals? Yes. That's him. Oh. He painted the Shangri-La sign. I mean, he's part of our so visual landscape. So he's been around here for a long and time. He brings he is the this warble. great uh, um, cartoonish aesthetic. I say cartoonish, that makes it sound like it's all like, you know. Yeah. But there are a lot of flowers and fairies yeah. in his yeah. art, but it's, it's, it's whimsical, it's uh, fun, it's uh, a little edgy, and then the music has, you know, it's a folk punk, How is that how you would describe it? I think it? that's pretty accurate. I'm telling you, I love a lot of their stuff. The song I get stuck in my head the most is called Just Busted. <laughs> There's a great video online of them like just walking around the grounds at 201 Poplar Hang singing, on just a minute. were you on the cover Hang of on Just, just a Bu minute. Busted? I'm Just Busted, we gotta pick it up. Thank you guys for joining us. Please come back next week and go out and enjoy your local color.